2012 Honda CRV. So body strap collision, no stickers, no emission stickers, no air conditioning stickers, nothing is really, I asked for the stickers. Uh, the auto body guy says here, the owner doesn't order stickers. Well, by law, you have to order emission stickers, but the owner doesn't do it. That really screws up everybody. Uh, now that federal mandate is uh, EPA for refrigerant is now under a emissions program. You should really have the sticker up under there for controlling that. Uh, so you have specs what to put in, but actually that's like stealing from the customer because when you do stuff like this and you leave the stickers out, that's the same thing as devaluing the value of the car. You wanna turn in this 2012 Honda um, CRV for a trade-in or sell it, the first thing your eyes notice is that all the stickers are missing. They go, oh, this has been in a front end accident. You want $3,000 for it? Nah, nah, maybe I'll give you 17 or $1,500. You know, this has been a big accident first thing that rings off accident is when a shop leaves out stickers that screws the customer over um, this one I recovered about two weeks ago and unfortunately it uh, air conditioning lines were not sealed uh, because they don't seal them at this shop unfortunately really badly moisture contaminated I, I can't take uh, I cannot get the, um, there's no leak but I cannot get the moisture out. It's so saturated in the PAG oil inside this one. I cannot vacuum it long enough in a reasonable amount of time to even come close to achieving removing the moisture contamination in the system. So feel sorry for the customer. You should see the paint job. The hood is all modeled. It's a uh, metal flake. It's called modeled because when you're spraying and you're afraid to spray and you have it too and you have it a little too dry or, or you're in there and you're too wet and you get spurts, uh, you get what is called modeled where you see these like quarter size or 50 cent piece size, kind of like a, uh, what do I say, a leopard, like the spots on a leopard. And you can see the metal flake has dried in different positions because when you spray metal flake, they're actually little flakes and they'll dry depending on how fast you have them dry and, and what substrate they're on they'll dry at different angles and they'll reflect the light back at different angles well when you get these little patches that dry at different angles wet patches dry patches wet patches some of them dry in the clear with the metal flake standing up more and some of them allow more time and they'll fall over more and they'll reflect the light at a different angle so you get all these round splotches that comes from an inexperienced uh painter and unfortunately they don't have two painters here there's not a senior painter who can take over and come over and fix that there is a way to fix it before you put the clear down now the only way to fix it is re-sand the hood down respray the base and re-clear it all over which i know they're not going to do uh, right off the pot just walking up to this vehicle you'd know it's been in a front end accident just because of the paint job um really really poor quality aftermarket condenser okay so here's the original equipment the original equipment on this one on this honda has 60 coolant passage tubes 60 passages for the refrigerant to flow and they have little fins you've seen my videos where i've cut these open before to show you what the insides look like on the aftermarket one that's in here that one right there that one has 54 cooling fins. So they cheated you out of eight cooling tubes, not cooling fins, cooling tubes. Every one of these passages that go all the way from one side all the way to the other. So there's few, fewer. So they cheated you a little bit out of cooling passages. When you get all the way down to the sub condenser, so this is your primary condensing up here, but your sub cooling part comes down here, right where you see that little mark right there. And there's a there's 12, 12, 12 cooling passages coming through. On the aftermarket one, they only have 11. So they only cheated you out of one tube and fins worth of sub cooling. But that's something. It won't make no difference on cool days, but on the very hottest day, every square inch of cooling surface you have is more for dissipating heat. 
so they cheated you out there. Then we get to the order of the fins themselves. On these fins in one inch, there's 18 fins in one inch. In this aftermarket one in here, when holding up the ruler, this one is 14 inches. So you get 14 fins, cooling fins, for one inch of length. This one is 18 fins, so they cheated you on fins. If you stretch these fins out along this whole length for 14 to 18 fins, you would see how much less aluminum there is, material, they have to pay for material. So they, on, and they get the save by leaving out. So say the difference between 14 and 18, say if I stretch this out right now, it would be about 12 feet long. But because they have four feet, or 14 fins per inch, I'm just giving you an example, instead of saying 12 feet long, it might be nine feet long. And um, so that's that much more surface area that's just not there. But the thing is, it's not just this one row. It's all 54 rows. But remember, the original one has 60. And not only that, you have less cooling fins and less tube. I'm sorry, so this one will have a high head pressure going into really hot regions. When they go into a desert, high heat and high humidity or a desert, uh, hot surface pavement area, Nevada, Arizona, where the black pops 140 degrees with the air coming up, that's, these things will suffer greatly when they get into the 90 plus temperature and you'll see that on your gauges because you'll have a really high tide but when I cool, fill it up here in San Francisco on this mild day of 66 degrees you'll see no difference there'll be no difference at all that you can measure and this is the problem with aftermarket condenser compared with OEM condenser now it'll go into a shop and if they do complain when they start getting up there in the 80s and 90s that uh, maybe the compressor cuts out on the high pressure switch maybe the clutch slips and it burns up the clutch uh, you know basically it's just bad in the lot for the life of their compressor all around and the performance of the AC for the customer so no customer by having the economy park as the insurance company call it or cutting corners you do not get equal or like quality for OEM to aftermarket condensers there's a few. There are a few aftermarket condensers, a couple of their line that do match, but that is very rare. So I'm gonna charge this one up and just feel sorry for the customer. And that's all I can do because that's how this shop is. No stickers, cheapest. The hood is gonna go out the way it is because I know the, unfortunately the painter here cannot fix the problem. And I know the owner is incapable of doing it themselves the owner can't do anything can't do metal work can't do can't do painting can't do parts replacement or anything so this poor car is going to go out the way it is and this poor customer gets the little screw over this is sad i see these out on the road all the time i, I always feel sorry when some family member or friend of a family member brings me a car to look at after they got it unfortunately uh that's when I find all the problems when they came from shops like this. And uh, yeah, so one of those things, just be wary when you guys are in mechanical shops or an air conditioning radiator shop and you're trying to diagnose why you have such a high, high head pressure and you're in a really hot climate, look for body shop evidence and then look at the condenser Ask the customer if they have their original sheet from the body shop and look down and see if the condenser was replaced. Or sometimes you can easily tell by looking at them, especially if they have an aftermarket sticker on them. And if they have an aftermarket sticker, you know it's been replaced. And if you can't diagnose anything else causing that high, high head pressure, just say, hey, switch out the compressor. And if it's something still under warranty or there's one of the shops that have an insurance company say, we give all our customers a lifetime warranty. Try to hit up the insurance company and say, hey dude, you guys recommended this piece of shit. And the insurance company will try to point to the body shop, uh, well, it's the body shop who bought it, but no, it's the insurance company who told the body shop not to use the OEM, so it forces the body shop to buy aftermarket. So it's not the body shop's fault. The body shop would like to sell a slightly more expensive unit, 
because they make a smaller percentage more on selling the right part that's OEM quality than they do a cheaper part. Uh, manufacturer of this condenser is, let's see who we got here. Oh, that culprit. Okay, that's the compressor, the condenser, that's the part number. And no, don't stick this on your car. If you have one of these Toyota CRVs. All right, see you guys later. There's no hell way in hell I'm gonna pull this system. This is so poorly moisture contaminated. No way. All right guys, see you later. Poor customer. <laughs>